Hey, what's going on? It's John Stewart here, Alamo City Cello. And I want to talk a little bit about the positive experiences that I'm having over the Almas Pharmacy Diner. Uh, the Almas Pharmacy is a 1940s diner that's situated uh, north central San Antonio, Texas. Uh, the intersection uh, that it sits at is Hildebrand and McCullough. And it's just a wonderful venue. It's a 1940s style and they've got great shakes there and solid food. And the folks are super sweet, very supportive of music. There's a, there's a full bar wine and, and, and beer, good selection of beer. It's family friendly as well. I've, I've made music there with my daughter and uh, just a wonderful venue. And so uh, when I approached them about doing an open classical event there, they were very receptive. And so uh, Rod Campbell agreed to, to host this. So we have a date in that, and, and, and it's every Wednesday from 8 to 10. This particular Wednesday, they had a private party, but we're hoping to get it really consistent. I think that's one of the keys to success. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about the, the, the kind of concept here of the open classical um, kind of idea. Um, I had done some open mics. Well, well, an open mic, what is that? That's where musicians come together and they, they play music. Uh, and, and it's kind of, you know, you get a certain time slot and you show up there. It's an open mic, you know. Uh, and uh, what I love about the open mic is this, there's a certain randomness to it. It's kind of like a street level sort of experience. Uh, when I lived in Boston in the 1980s, uh, I played music in Harvard Square and um, in government center and that was a real learning experience to play music on the street so when I started off you know I was like okay I'm gonna play really loud I'm gonna get myself an amplifier and everyone hears me and the more people that hear me then the more money I'm gonna make because you know the more ears and all. but then some really experienced musicians they said no no that's not what you want to do you want to play less you want to draw them in you want to draw them in closer right and, and to be more intimate and uh, then you know when when you you know got eye contact, then you can look down at your little basket there. When, you know you have dollar seed money in there, and hopefully that'll grow. And you know there's dollar bills in there, a little nest egg, which invariably you know got spent on food and drink over at Grendel's. You know, but I was 24 years old and I was figuring out what music was about. It's such an important venue. I know it sounds strange to call the street a venue, but you know I learned about making music for other people. And it, another little tricks like, for example, there'll be a crowd of people walking down the platform, right? And so you're like, you're playing, and, and what I would do is I would slow it down just a little bit as they were walking by, and you know what? Their feet would slow down. It was like magic flute. Right? You're like, okay, so if we got some, we have some, some, some sway here. We got a little sway going on. That's nice, you know, like a magic, like some magic spells and stuff like that. So very interesting to have that experience. And, and I think the open mic is kind of the closest thing to the street that we have in San Antonio. Now that's a whole nother video about how we facil facilitate like street performance, you know, and uh, Illuminarius is like a, a festival that happens here in San Antonio. There's live, uh, live events there as well. But I mean, I wanna talk a little bit about openclassical.org and how that changed my life. I took a trip up to Dallas and I met a man named Mark Lanson and he had this vision of an open mic for classical players and so I was invited to one of their events it was at a restaurant a Mexican eatery there in Dallas and there must have been about 150 people there and it was beautiful the energy in the room was great mostly musicians and I thought to myself, you know, what's happening in this restaurant amongst the patrons, the participants, the, the, well, the people that were sitting down and listening was, you know, there was community there. It was community building. And then you had this venue. And when I walked in, there was this young man, his, his name was Aaron. And he had his hair slicked back. He was like maybe 21, 22. And he had this music and he was kind of sheepishly looking at it. And Mark Lanson came out, here on next, you know, and he was a little bit nervous. And so, and then he got on stage and it was kind of a couple rough starts, but the, the audience was like, come on, Aaron, you know, this is his first time up there. Right. And 
The second time was better. I mean, it was much better. In fact, you could see that, you know, once he relaxed and limbered a little bit, it was actually very good. So I thought to myself, what a beautiful training ground for him, you know. And then, and then there was this lady uh, who was a, a professor at SMU, and she, she got up and sang Queen of the Night aria. And it was just spellbinding. It was incredible. Incredible singing, Mozart. And I thought to myself, why not bring music to the people? Why not really get it street level? You know, the, the, this, is, this is something that I think that has great possibility. You know, San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the United States. And it's constantly growing. There's new people coming all the time here. And I think a percent of them are really great musicians. And they want to play. They want to play. And if we were just to work together and facilitate, be facilitators, to make that happen and to keep that going on an ongoing basis. I think we'd be doing a service for the city of San Antonio. You know, we don't have to go too far to see success. Go up to Austin. You know, they got Austin city limits up there. And, uh, you know, they say in Austin that it's, they, they call it the, the musical capital, the live music capital of the world. You know, not just Texas, but I mean, we're talking, you know, the whole planet. <laughs> I mean, you know, so, and, and, and said that there's more live concerts going on in any given day in Austin than in New York City, which would be a real feat, you know. That's, that's great. That's very good. So you have this sort of entrepreneurial energy and you have this spirit that's, that, that, you know, goes beyond just a concert hall or goes beyond the church. I'm not against the church or, 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 you know, these are beautiful places. But I think that when you're making music in the church, for example, it's really for the greater glory of God. It's reinforcing a certain common belief system that we have. And I think when we make music on the stage, it's a, really in an ideal situation to hear the music. It's one performer that everyone else has kind of just zeroed in on that. And, you know, uh, it's, you know, the ultimate respect you give to the music is just by listening to it. But something else happens in a club. Something else happens in the street. Where you have this sort of interaction between people. And then you have live music on top of that. And it feels different. You know, this, is, this has been going on for centuries. You know, some of my colleagues, they complain. They say, hey, they're not listening to us. And this is, you know, really not ideal. But I think it does go into the brain. I mean, they are hearing on some basic level. They're hearing the music. You know, I'll give you an example of this. At our second open mic at the Almas Pharmacy, Samuel Gaskin was playing piano. And he's a wonderful musician and really a great guy too. And he's making up this stuff that's like a combination of French Baroque and jazz, you know, and a little bit of new age in there. And I was like, wow, when I listened to this, it just made me feel really good. And I think that there's something that happens live that doesn't happen on a recording. There's something that happens live. There's a certain synergy, a certain energy that's being exchanged. And I mean, it's hard to describe it, but after listening to Sam Gaskin play the piano for 20 minutes, I just felt like someone had gone over to the dimmer switched and turned a little brighter. Everything was a little easier to see. Let there was more clarity in the world. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, this is what it looks like. You know, there was clarity. And that was so wonderful, it was so beautiful. Right, and have, have, you know, playing with Beth Johnson at her debut was so wonderful. She's such a great artist. Just the lyrical sense and just the singing, oh, it's just gorgeous. You know, San Antonio Symphony member and just a, a wonderful human being, really nice person. So uh, she and I have played together at the Celtic Open Jam on Thursday at the Almas Pharmacy. And that's more playing by ear and playing Irish music and Celtic. But invariably it descends, you know, that, 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 that one descends into like, you know, <laughs> the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Which, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Grateful Dead. I mean, their progressions and their, their stuff is great, you know. And um, within that sort of um, culture, I think is bringing together like a certain energy. A certain energy and that energy is somewhat random because you never you honestly never know what's going to walk through the door you think it's like what is that you know but that's what makes it exciting and interesting listen so here's the deal 
I would love for you to come to the Almas Pharmacy and bring your voice and come make music, right? Now, one of the things that's so beautiful is having Samuel Gaskin play with us. He's a skilled pianist. And I think that, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting opportunity. This is not karaoke. This guy will follow you, right? It's just so much more interesting. Anyways, uh, all the best and let's stay in touch. Adios.